this is part six or seven. I don't know, I've lost track. Anyway, let me uh, just tell you this. He traveled for work still. He still worked for Owen Mills. Um, we moved into a little cottage and my son became friends with the boy up the road. Um, they s same grade, same class, and they were also able to see each other after school. They were 20 houses apart. We lived on a road that dead ended. Um, cute, cute little neighborhood. Now, a lot of cottages, and I absolutely loved it. Um, it was a two story, and I had this beautiful craft room, which I absolutely loved because I could go up there and do what I needed to do, and it was great. And unfortunately, um, well, we became good friends with the, um, the boy's family. And he's still my son's best friend to this day, even though they live, I don't know, about 500 miles apart, they're still best friends. Okay, so anyway, um, we'd go down, you know, their place and play games, um, Yahtzee and stuff like that. I can't even think of all the games we used to play. Trivial Pursuit, stuff like that. And we became really good friends. Um, I was my son's Cub Scout leaner at the time because no one else would step up to do it. Um, I took the boys to Cub Scouts. I took the two boys everywhere I could go. I mean, absolutely love spending time with the boys. And it was good because Doug was on the road and I didn't, you know, see him a lot. Well, we moved in in November, so around June they had finished their year of school. We had um, a week of Cub Scout camp and I was volunteering to help out at the camp. My, um, I couldn't do it one day because I had a doctor's appointment and that was on a Wednesday, but Doug was actually home that day and was able to, um, to volunteer. Anyway, that day came and went. Um, he went left for work on Thursday. Thursday afternoon, um, my son's friend's father came to the house and said, I need to share something with you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me stop there. New Year's. We had done some Christmas stuff together. Well, New Year's Day, my husband had gone to the American Legion to watch um, one of the bowl games that Penn State was in. He came home, he was ecstatic because apparently they'd won and he was pissy ass drunk. He wanted to go down to their house. I was upstairs in the craft room, I had no idea he'd left a house. He'd walked down and broke into their house and he proceeded to beat up their uh, teenage son who had has Asperger's. He's the mind of a six year old. And yeah, broke in the house. Um, the father had said, no, please, you know, not today. We're not, we don't want visitors. He walked around to the back of the house, walked in the back door as if he owned the place, proceeded, walked straight into the, the teenager's room and got on top of him, was screaming in his face and was like pushing him down into the bed because he was lying on the bed watching TV. Um, the father had come in picked him up off of his son and threw him against the wall. And he looked up at him and said, why'd you do that? Like he had no idea why. Um, the father then, um, he tried calling me. I was upstairs, I didn't hear the phone. He drove down with his son, came to me and said, you need to come get your husband. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's asleep downstairs. He came home drunk. He's like, no, he's at my house and he just assaulted my kid. I'm like, holy crap, why didn't you call the police? Because I want to spare you that. Just come get him. Well, I went down, I got him, I brought him home, and the next day he denied it. And now, I have to tell you that he denied a lot of stuff. He would take his hands and like this and push into my face. Now, I have trigeminal neuralgia, which is facial nerve damage. When I do this, it kills me. And this is n not even a hard touch. This is a gentle wipe that hurts. 
but you have no idea how many times a day you touch your face. It will drive you crazy. Anyway, he would push his hands in and squeeze, knowing he was giving me pain. I'd say, stop, stop, you're squeezing my face. No, I'm not. Ran into the garage door. I was in the garage when he did it. I peeked out the top window. Why, what the hell? Why'd you hit the garage door? I didn't. Yes, you did. I saw it. No, you didn't. Notorious for telling you that you were wrong. Nothing he did happened. He even told our friends, I can shit all over that woman. She will take me back because she loves me that much. Okay, so I go to camp with the kids all week. Um, Thursday afternoon, he's in Alabama, I guess. And my son's best friend's father comes over and he says, I've got to show you something and you're not going to be happy. What? He goes, I was looking for um, a couple of dollars in my wife's purse and I found her secret phone. What the fuck's a secret phone? Excuse me. Oh, the phone I didn't know she had. But here's the kicker. And so he opens it. And on the phone are pictures of his wife and my husband in hotel rooms, having sex in the bathtub on days where he told me he worked and he didn't. And I was done. I told him, thank you. He left to go deal with his wife. And I called my husband's secret phone and I left him a message. And when he called me before going to sleep that night after his uh, day photographing others, I told him, well, did you get my message? He says, no, I have no calls from you. And I said, oh, well, you should try your secret phone. My secret phone? Oh, yes. And I rattled the number off to him and I said, I left it on that one. Yeah, I saw the pictures of you and her and we are done. You can live here. You can move a bed up into your office, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, we are no longer married. I'm not kicking you out, but I'm no longer yours. As far as I'm concerned, I am divorced. I am done with you. I can't have you keep ripping my heart out, throwing it on the floor and stomping it nearly to death. I'm done. I am finished with the crap. He didn't get home until Saturday night. At that time, Ian and I had fallen asleep watching a movie. He was in my bed. So the ex slept on the couch. All day Sunday, because I'd spent an entire week at Cub Scout camp, I was still wiped out. And because I have lupus, um, I um, I was exhausted, and so I spent Saturday, Sunday in bed, and I will pick up in the next video.